Do you love fruity, sweet fragrances? Because if you do, you're gonna absolutely love Mula Mula. Hey, what's going on? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, hit that subscribe button down below and also make sure to follow my Instagram page. But that's right, today we're reviewing Byron Parfums Moolah Moolah. Now, this fragrance has gotten so much hype in the fragrance community. I've come across it a few times, definitely piqued my interest from everything I've heard about it. So I finally have a bottle in my collection now. And I do want to shout out Byron Parfums for actually sending this out for review. That's not going to persuade my opinion about the fragrance or anything like that. It still will be my complete, honest opinions. But I am very excited to be talking about this fragrance today and actually see if it's been living up to that hype that I've seen for the past few years now. So before we start talking about the scent profile, let's go over some information about it. Now, this fragrance was launched in 2018, so it's actually not that old at the time of this recording, of course. The retail price is for the only size it comes in, which is 75 ml. We'll run you back $235, so it is a pretty penny. It's not cheap by any means at all. We'll obviously discuss it if I think that price is reasonable and worth it for the quality of the juice and of course the presentation. So the concentration is actually an extract to parfum, so you are getting your money's worth when it comes to perfume oils. And if you're not familiar with that, extract to parfum is basically the highest on the scale of oil concentration you can get in fragrances, so that is nice. Now, the perfumer behind Mula Mula, I did a lot of research, do not know who was the nose behind this, so if you're watching this and you have that kind of information, leave a comment down below. With all the information out of the way, let's go look at the packaging and presentation you get with Mula Mula now. So take a look at the box of Mula Mula. I do have to say right off the bat that they upped their presentation 10 times because a few years ago when they first launched it, it was in more of a generic kind of box and bottle. This one, however, is phenomenal. Of course, you have Byron Parfums, Mula Mula. This is from the Neurotic Collection, of course. On the back, you do have your barcode and batch code to authenticate your products and see when it was produced. Nothing on the bottom. You have Extrait de Parfum made in France on that side. And then you have the Byron Parfums logo on top. Now, my only gripe with the box is this sleeve. It's very hard to take off and put back on, but I'll show you what's inside here now. All right, so that definitely did take a moment to take that sleeve off and will probably take a moment to put it back on, but it's totally worth it because what you get inside here is just phenomenal presentation. Of course, you have Byron Parfums kind of embossed right there. Nothing around, of course, the same logo on top, but your bottle is actually rested in here in this cloth insert with Byron Parfums up there. Just phenomenal presentation. You definitely, when you look at this and feel this, you feel like you're actually getting your money's worth for that $235 price tag because this is pure luxury. Let's look at the bottle now. So take a look at this awesome looking bottle. It is phenomenal looking. Of course, you have Mula Mula. Byron Parfums right there embossed around the atomizer collar. You have the Byron Parfums logo embossed into the glass. Nothing on the sides or the, or the back, but on the bottom, you do have Made in France Byron Parfums embossed. It doesn't come with a sticker, which if you've seen my reviews, I'm not the biggest fan of bottles that don't have a sticker or a label on the bottom. Just kind of seems unfinished, but it's not the biggest deal. Of course, on top of the cap, do the logo. And this cap is very weighted, extremely heavy. It is complete metal, nothing inside the cap, nothing on the atomizer, but all in all, I think the bottle looks phenomenal with this kind of blue-ish kind of colorway. And it does sort of resemble like a Mason Francis Kirchhoff bottle, but not exactly, just a similar kind of style, but looks phenomenal in my opinion. In the top, you have caramel, peach, strawberry, and raspberry. In the mid, you have ginger, pink pepper, and labdanum. And in the base, you have vanilla, musk, oud, and patchouli. Now, Mula Mula will be classified as a sweet gourmand. So let's go to spray this one, test out the atomizer, and remind myself of this opening. See, let's see what we get. Wow, guys, one of the best atomizers in the business. Definitely gives like Creed run sports money. Definitely gives Moss Milano run sports money. Absolutely stellar atomizer, which I'm always a sucker for. So let's go to smell this very fruity opening now. So obviously looking at those notes with a bunch like a fruit cocktail along with that caramel, that's exactly what you get. But what stands out to me the most is that caramel note and that peach, which is very, very thick, very sweet. It's almost like a peach kind of covered in a caramel drizzle, so to say. That's the vibe I get. It's kind of like a fuzzy peach as well. 
And for me, when I, when I look at peach as a note or smell it, my mind immediately goes to a feminine fragrance. This one, however, is very, very unisex. A guy can definitely pull it off even with that kind of caramel peachy vibe in the top. No problem at all. It's very sweet, very gourmand, very fruity. It's almost like a fragrance that you just kind of want to bite into, so to say. That's the vibe I get with this one, which is a great thing. You know a fragrance is good if you want to eat it, especially when it comes to gourmands. Now that strawberry, the raspberry, I don't honestly pick up raspberry at all in the opening. Now that strawberry though is kind of like the second or third player to the opening along with the caramel and peach but the strawberry definitely kind of comes across like a candy-like strawberry note, very red, like red berries, candy-ish. Just all in all, that opening is very, very addicting. Plus, it actually lasts a very long time as well because, spoiler alert, this fragrance is not very complex. It is sort of linear. What you smell in the opening is sort of what you get in the dry down. It does change a little bit though. But if you're a fan of the opening, you're in for a treat for basically the life of the fragrance. But once you do get into the mid, or at least when the, some of the mid notes start to come through along with the caramel and the fruity touches, you do get this very kind of spicy, zesty ginger note along with that pink pepper. And I think the ginger actually brings a very nice kind of uh, spicy kick to the top which actually I'm starting to really appreciate the note of ginger every time I smell it in a fragrance. I actually really enjoy it. And this one is no different. I think it works perfect along the caramel and the peach. And that pink pepper also bring in a spicy or, or, or peppery kind of vibe along with that zesty ginger. Just works beautifully blended together. So once you make your way into the base, which mind you, that peach and that caramel is still there even once the base notes start to come through, you're probably honestly wondering where that oud actually has a spot or takes place in the composition. Now, but what I do get the most in that base is the vanilla, a very kind of warming, creamy, slightly spicy vanilla, which works good with that ginger. And you also get an earthy patchouli base. And I love a patchouli base. Patchouli is one of my favorite notes in the top three, actually. So I'm a sucker for patchouli, especially a good one in the base of a fragrance. And this one is done very well. Now that oud, however, is not the main player. It's actually more of like a, um, a support player in the base here. Just kind of gives a woodiness to it, almost like a little bit of a nutty wood is how it's coming across. It's not funky, it's not animalic, it's not dirty. Nothing like that, so if you're kind of scared of that oud base, or if you're a woman watching this and you think maybe you'll lean more masculine because of it, do not worry at all, it does not. It just kind of provides a little bit more character to the composition. But wow, honestly, probably one of the best fruity fragrances I've smelled in a long time, or even ever. And if you're a guy watching this and you kind of want to get a very kind of playful, fruity fragrance, you might want to check this one out. So the best seasons and occasions to wear Mula Mula, which by the way, I absolutely love that name. If you don't know, Mula means like a slang word for money or cash, but it also means Mula, I think in Spanish. So you know this one is probably gonna be a huge kick when it comes to performance, which we'll talk on in a moment. But however, the best seasons to wear this one is definitely the fall, winter, and springtime. Definitely probably not the summer, just because it's so thick, it's so fruity and so sweet. It will be cloning and people around you probably will not like it. However, the fall, winter, and spring, this stuff just absolutely will shine. Now for occasions, I would consider this one to be casual. Just kind of spray on to maybe run errands, even go on a date though. This one would actually be a very sexy, romantic kind of fragrance for a date night. Even a first date as well. She will actually be coming in closer to you if you're a guy wearing this one. Smell on this one because it definitely has that addicting, alluring nature about it. Just not really formal when you're like dressing up in a suit or a tie or even like a button up. Doesn't really fit that scenario at all. Just because it has a very playful, fruity vibe about it. This was actually the fragrance I chose to wear the evening of New Year's. Because I think it's a perfect kind of like going out party situation fragrance. And it's strong enough to push through the crowd as well. But for gender and age groups, this one like I said earlier is unisex right down the middle which is just perfect in my opinion, a fruity fragrance for a woman and a fruity fragrance for a guy. Now, for age groups though, this is youthful through and through. It's not mature, it's not really classy, it's not sophisticated, it's not grown up, it's very playful and youthful. I would say anybody, probably like 18 to maybe 30, this will be best suited for without a doubt. However, wear what you want when you want, just in my opinion, very youthful and it's perfect for those age groups. Now wrapping things off with the performance of Mula Mula. Like I said, this means mule. 
mules kick hard of course so you're gonna expect this to be a punch a kick to the face and that's exactly what this is easily above average when it comes to longevity i get around like 12 even maybe more plus hours on skin where you can actually still detect it very very easily the projection was also very loud as well maybe around four to five hours of pretty good projection at also which is easily above average guys if you don't know if you don't watch my reviews i keep all these very uniform I, I look at below average as under eight hours of longevity average is right down the middle around eight hours give or take and above average is over eight hours of longevity which this one will be classified as and obviously it's a straight to buff foam so you're going to expect this stuff just to last and last if you spray this stuff on clothes you're going to have to throw your clothes in the washer at least twice to fully get rid of it hit it even at that it might still be on your clothes that you can smell very potent strong juice even just looking at the juice in the bottom when you kind of move it around you can tell it's very dense and potent which is always nice and obviously expecting from a straight to buff foam you expect potent oily juice now most of the time though extracts don't really project that much this one though i don't know what byron pop farms did but they knocked it out of the park when it comes to performance but that's going to do it for my review of the popular mula mula let me know down below if you actually tried this fragrance if there's any favorites from the house of mula mula i know they have like the chronic they have the rouge extreme of mula mula and the chronic they have like black dragon and stuff like that which i do have actually the chronic rouge extreme and black dragon right there in the 15 ml like a travel spray which maybe I'll review those at some point as well because those are also very unique, awesome creations. But yeah, Mula Mula, that's gonna wrap it up. Let me know down below your thoughts. Subscribe if you guys haven't already and I'll see all of you back here in my next video. Take care, everybody.